Hi, I'm Grant Sabatier, the creator of Millennial Money and the author of Financial Freedom. And today I'm going to watch this video, how we retired early with $2.2 million to travel the world. I've never seen it before and I'm gonna give my reaction. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to watch more of these reaction videos. Ready to rock and roll? All right, let's do it. Pumps for this. Since we've been retired, I have been able to take a lot of time to do the things that I wanted to do. And that's the reason we started in a low cost of living country, because it gave us a very good insight of where our money is going to get us. Are they Once in Portugal? We felt that we could adjust properly and, and be able to live retired that way. Things just fell into place so we were able to do more things instead of being caught up in the whole rat race of nice the job. United States lifestyle. Move to Portugal. Yeah, I was right. I'm Diane. And I'm Guillermo. And I was 47 when we achieved fire. And I was 44 when I achieved fire. We had saved up 2.2 million and decided to travel the world in search of our forever home. Portugal's like cheating when it comes to fire because I think the cost of living is probably like 25 to 30 percent what it is in the US. So if they've saved $2.2 million, that effectively means they have six or $7 million in US dollars. Diane and Guillermo have a lot of money saved up uh, for, for their journey. I was a real estate agent and I had developed a small real estate team in the United States, Northern Virginia, DC metro area. I was in the telecom industry for over 20 years, did four years in the military and the Marines. So I grew up in Northern Virginia. It's one of the fastest growing real estate markets in the country. I'm guessing that in addition to getting nice big commissions on her sales, she also invested in a couple investment properties. I'm excited to see if that's the case. In 2018, our net worth was 2.2 million US dollars. And currently today in 2022, our net worth is 2.6 million US. There you go. That's an important point. They retired in 2018 and they've been able to participate in the end of what was really one of the best bull markets in history. And I started investing in 2010 and just the growth of my investments from 2018 to 2022 has actually outpaced theirs, but they've been able to take advantage of that rare opportunity. Whereas if you retire at the right time and then your portfolio grows you know, 20 or 30% right after you retire, you have a lot more options. My stepfather actually was diagnosed with cancer and my mother ended up having to take care of him along with myself. And the week that he passed away, my mother was diagnosed with cancer. I spent more than a year taking care of her. And I realized even though I'd always wanted to retire before 50, I just didn't even want to wait any longer. I started really taking a look at our numbers. I started talking with a financial advisor. I found the FIRE community and I came up with a plan and presented it to Guillermo. So it sounds like Diane's really leading the charge here and it's usually gonna be one person in a couple that takes the lead. And in fact, my wife could care less about money or fire or financial independence, but she was excited about the opportunity to have more freedom. It's important to note that it's a lot easier to reach financial independence if you have your partner on board. Our plan was to stay two years in each country to explore and see if we can find our forever home in each country. So we did three years in Mexico because of the pandemic. It was one extra year that we stayed. After that, we wanted to explore more of Europe. We have our money mostly in the real estate market and in Roth IRA. We don't actually have a financial advisor and we also have money in brokerage accounts and in high investment savings accounts. I hope they get into their specifics of their real estate investments. That's the first thing that they listed. And then the second was Roth IRAs. And then the last was brokerage. My guess is that they have a couple of rental properties and they're making some money that way. In addition to the money that we saved up for retirement, we kept three rental properties uh, yes. in Virginia as part of our investment portfolio. So we actually sold a property in Alexandria, Virginia that we were living in, made over $120,000 on that property. We bought one in Gainesville that we lived in for a number of years, and that's one that we converted into one of the three rentals. Here's one of the mistakes they made, if any mistake, 
it's selling that property in Alexandria, Virginia for only, you know, 100 to 150 thousand dollars profit. It's one of the fastest appreciating markets in the country, super close to National Airport in DC, right across uh, the Potomac River from DC. An Alexandria property is something, at least in their case, I'd recommend they hold on to as a rental for as long as possible. It's so much more valuable hanging on to it as a rental for the next 20, 30 years than it was selling for the hundred to hundred fifty thousand dollars in profit. So our typical expenses in the U.S. before we retired was about seven thousand U.S. dollars a month, and in Mexico our expenses were about two thousand seven hundred dollars a month. We have only been in Portugal about six months now. Our living expenses are going to be, on average, about three thousand seven hundred dollars a month. They have like seventy times their expected annual expenses based on where they're living in Portugal. So my guess is they could have fired maybe three, four, five years earlier. And I wonder why they actually decided to be more conservative. I spent some time in Lisbon myself, and it was hard to spend money there, uh, especially when you can eat those fresh sardines for like, a you know, one euro per bushel and, and get a bottle of wine for, you know, two euros or less. So I'm actually curious how they're spending so much money unless they have a really baller house, uh, which it doesn't look like from this video they have, but who knows, maybe they've got some secret splurges and they're like really into scuba diving or something. I've been getting into crypto, so I may be, you know, learning about that more or going out and taking different lessons, whether it's languages or scuba diving or yoga. Ah, look at that scuba diving, he called it. Something that's going on that we work into our daily routines. Right now, we're not considering moving back to the U.S., but one thing we've learned in life is never say never. So we're really looking more at Eastern Europe, Southeast Asia, possibly South America. Uh, and we'll continue our journeys until we find our little piece of paradise. Yeah, they're feeling really bullish right now because their investment portfolio has grown over $400,000 since they reached fire and retired early in 2018. They have a YouTube channel that's probably making some money. And so they're expressing this extremely bullish reaction after having that growth. Their portfolio has probably dropped you know, about 20% this year, uh, which is even more than it would have appreciated. Uh, so I'd be curious to see if they're still ultimately feeling this way. But overall, they're in a really great position. The biggest thing is keep exploring, keep an open mind. You don't have to pick your forever home. And in fact, maybe you should throw that idea out the window. They have immense flexibility and freedom. They spend their time doing the things that they love. They like learning new things. You can really do that anywhere in the world, with one being terrible, 10 being amazing. I'm gonna clock uh, Diane and Guillermo at a solid 8.75. So I think they've done pretty much everything right. And in fact, maybe too much right. And I would encourage them not to be too beholden to their spreadsheets and maybe take a little bit more risks in their life. Maybe spend a little bit more money if they can to see how it makes them feel. All right, well, that's about it. Thanks for watching this reaction video. For more great videos, make sure you subscribe below to CNBC Make It. Check out my book, Financial Freedom, available on Amazon or your local bookstore. And check out millennialmoney.com to learn how to make, save, and invest more money so you can build a life you love.